there you go. You jumped right in in the middle of my shop time. Like I have some shop time. What I like doing is shopping for knives. That's what I like. QSP knives. Better knife, better life. Happy wife, happy... Okay, never mind. And who has these strange new brand budget knives? Who does? Could it be White Mountain Knives? Justin? And I've got pages for each. Here's a knife. You might not recognize it because it's right there in that pile of stuff there. Right? <laughs> and uh, Oh my God, we got... Uh, but, hold on, let me, let me show you a thing. Okay, so, eh, we're gonna have crap all over here. White Mountain Knives. So these are different knives. The, how about phonics here? S-T-H-E-N-I-A. Thinia, Thinia Knife, which is this orange doodobbler, which is a very big, kind of heavy duty, bad boy dog. Of course, it's got bearings, but of course, of course it does. And yeah, like 39 bucks. Oh, and then you got the little parrot knife, which is over here in this pile. And it, this one's green. And uh, that one is 20 bucks and 97 cents. Just remember, LTK is your discount code for 10% off. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. And so there's your... <laughs> Am I going to call it Cynthia? Cynthia. <laughs> oh my God. This is, I mean, I used to, I swear to God, I used to be really good at phonics in school. That was, let's see, what, 18, 23, somewhere in there. So, yeah. And the Pangolin, which is, of course, down there. But these are different colors, you know, black or green, orange, pink. You can get that one. We'll put it back together for you. Or you can get, check that out. That's a skull on there. Um, I didn't get that one from Justin. He goes, dude, you're mall ninja all the way. So he insulted me enough. I said, nah, I don't want it then. If you're going to call me a mall ninja. So there you go. There's a whole lineup of knives. QSP. Check them out on his site. Uh, and then, yes, there's actually the one that's laying on the table, that green. So, I want to tell you about them because they're another budget brand of knives. They just keep coming in like, like lemmings. Lemmings to the sea, right? This is the shark. Did I show you on that page? Of course, I blew it off, right? So, this is the shark. So, this one here, as we're going to put it together, is a D2 steel blade. But I just thought maybe, 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 maybe if I can pick this sandwich off the table without cutting myself. There's your ball barons. And it's D2. This one's D2. Now, this is that Pangolin knife. And it's G10. Do you like to, should we review it part by part? Now, on this part of the knife, there's your pocket clip. Not exactly deep uh, carry. And, but we do have on the lock bar side, a little bit of weight relieving skeletonizing on the scales. <clears throat> on this side, we have a lot more skeletonizing on the scales. And of course the G10, and of course here's your, your front facing uh, pivot and your bearings, okay? Let's keep everything from falling apart. And of course your stop pin goes in there, which it must be rolling around on the table somewhere around here. Oh, well, no, it's not. It's stuck in this side, okay? So there's your blade stop. In any case, I think there's only two pieces undone. It's this one screw to the body, to the scales, and the other side of the pivot screw. So I just wanted to show you the breakout. You know, there's no point in taking the, the scale away from the liner. I think you get the point. Do you get the point? And I'm not going to do the wipe down service, whatever. These are brand new. And this is how they go, Joe. Did you notice the D-shaped pivot? Well, let me think about why that's like that, right? Because you have no way of stabilizing this side if you're unscrewing that thing. You do want this pivot not to turn. 
You do not want it to turn. Um, and so this little dog up here, put the top on. If we can do so without too much yelling, screaming, cussing, and uh, biting, of course, you know, you get, of course, I got the lock bar thing, you know, freaked out in here. So let's see if we can stick her together. It should go all the way through. Pen going, put back together. What can I say? Um, but that gives you an idea what it looks like. You got bearings. This is skeletonized liners, so that's nice. This feels like a best tech knife. And I happen to have one laying around on my table. The swordfish, which I love, is like my favorite G10 best tech knife. Uh, D2 blade, of course. Great action. Um, this one feels a lot like it. I might have got this just, just a little bit crank, yanked and cranked down. If you want to give yourself a little bit more leeway, maybe just a part of a turn. Okay, that's, that. Fit. there you go. That's better. Okay. I had her just a little right and tight. But in any case, uh, yeah. Yeah, still centered up. Okay, so, yes. But these feel so much the same. They really do. And, of course, you know, Best Tech has the Lion and the Scimitar and the kendo and the grampus and all that kind of stuff so these are really cool and the war wolf which this kind of reminds me a little bit of the war wolf a little bit a little bit uh, there's your stone wash so you know i think these list for like 52 sometimes 55 these are this is 45 with 10 percent on his side about 40 bucks so is this worth taking a shot at? I think it is if you like the design. Because it's a solid knife. It, it feels like this one to me. Look at the liners. Look at the blade stock. You know, they're very similar. Um, you know, both got bearings on the pivot and all that kind of stuff. Really good. So this is the Pangolin. Okay. So, and this... Is the shark now I'm not gonna take this one apart but note that it's probably the same bearings although this is not skeletonized these scales are not skeletonized okay in here not at all so it's a little bit different and it's not D2 this is 440 C now which one's the shark okay this one's a shark this is the box okay so this is not 45 bucks so I oh mean are we shaving dollars? We really are shaving dollars. I mean, where these guys are sticking these knives, knives in these different uh, pricing slots, it's like, well, you can get this one 28, but if you move up to $30, if you move to $33, I mean, it's like, whoo, man, that's getting skinny in those little pricing quarters. But there you go, QSP 103A, black. So, cool knife. It's got bearings, solid, G10. This kind of has a little bit of a flavor, kind of like some of the milling on the G10 of like the Tuya knife 1601, in a way, okay? Although the Tuya knife 1601 is D2 and ceramic bearings, these are, from what I could see on the Pangolin, were not ceramic bearings, and of course this is 440. But is this a, a, you know, this or this in the green or whatever? Is that a model you like? You know, you buy what you like. Interesting, huh? Okay, so we're just kind of doing an intro to these models. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, this was the parrot knife. So I guess this is the, the presentation side of it. So this is just a little knife, a little slender, easy carry, lightweight knife, and it doesn't have bearings at all. It has washers, but it's not a flipper, okay? So let's see if we could stick this dog together. Um, yeah, we got a D-shaped. Um, we still got a D-shaped pivot on there. See that? 
squared off right there. And I let me see if I need to position that in a particular way and stick this blade on there. And uh, there we go. Come on. Come on. You can get on there. There you go. Okay. So, oh. Whoa, 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 whoa. What have we here, my friends? Uh-huh. Well. Oh, okay. So up against the blade, I'm sorry, up against the blade are these nylon. So they use a combination. So this is very much like another knife we have reviewed where they use a combination of the nylon washers and these bronze washers. Yeah, cool, okay. So yeah, that's that's been done before. Been there, done that. So we wanna put this back together at some point in time. Let me get our, oh, let me get our blade stop in here. Hey buddy. And flip this baby back together. If we can line up our pivot and our stop pin at the same time. And then push this back together on, uh, on point. And we got to put some screws through here and line that up. So, and meanwhile, of course, we got the, the main, uh, yeah, we got to do better than that. Got to do a number eight here. Okay, let's try that to start with. Okay, getting there, getting close. And uh, flip it over. Line up our other little dolls and uh, flip them in there. And our number six is just sitting out here, which is fine because I don't need it. I don't need it cranked into anything. Just need to get them started. Okay, next one, number six. Apparently, I'm seeing that there's extra screw holes for bringing the uh, pocket clip right and left hand so that'll get that okay let's see where we are and tighten all the rest of this stuff up yeah okay that'll work snug it up make sure we're all good both sides okay now let's see what our pivot looks like and are we close to being not quite? Hmm? Not quite. So we got a little work to do here. I was looking around the camera. That way I was actually able to hit my... Oh yeah, I can tell. Yeah, I didn't have this even close. Now it's way the hell off. Oh, I know why. Because I don't have my crap. I don't have my stop pin um, put down there the way I need it. Let me see if I can muscle it a little bit. Yes, I did. Okay, I muscled it. And yeah, that was uh, not pushed in all the way. That'll make a huge difference, you know. There you go, centered up. Now, this is one of those knives where this is gonna be stiff if you have this pivot too tight. So you need to kind of adjust it. You don't want a lot of blade play or anything, but you kind of want it. You can feel it relax a little. Kind of come in here a little bit. Yeah, I 
I moved it too far. Uh, well, there's not a lot of blade play there. Mm, well, okay, it's a little teeny off, but see, you can flick it. So you kind of want, I mean, I think, right? You want this to be flickable, not too tough. Can we come back in just a little bit? We're pretty close to centered. Okay, so we're good. Okay, Parrot, 20 bucks, G10. All right, so the Parrot comes in this little box. 20.97. So with your 10% discount, you're under 20 bucks. That kind of thing. So this is a nice, small, flickable. Okay, so are we all back together? Oh my God. So I wanted to do this because I just wanted to like show you the knives, what's kind of in there and this and that uh, as far as bearings. And no, this is not as we saw the uh, uh, skeletonized scales. And these are those nylon on top of uh, bronze. So the one I can't pronounce because I didn't take enough phonics apparently. Sthenia. 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 I don't know. Sin. Whatever. Shark. Can we say shark? So you better buy this knife. Can't pronounce this one anyhow. Pangolin. I can do that. Okay, that's not that difficult. Check that. That's very open. You know, you got the, the liners that show through, but these are skeletonized. This is D2. This is very best tech-ish. This, not so much because it's not skeletonized on the liners. Um, it's less expensive, though, and it's 440, not D2. And shame on you for having a name like that. And this is tip down only so i'm not getting that i that's i don't like that at all but the style of the knife i think is cool and it's a honker it's a honker and it's got a backspacer so what do we got backspacers backspacers no backspacer no backspacer okay so but these are both 440 this is 440 this is d2 now let's do a way off I mean, and we're a ways off, a way off. Okay, shark. Oh, let's start with the smallest one. Let's not. Let's start with the parrot. I can pronounce that too. See, look at that flick. All right, cool. Parrot. Eighty nine point five. You know what? Let's just uh, let's go or back around two ounces and do that. Okay. Three ounces, 3.1, whatever. Shark. Ooh, 5.74. You needed to get skeletonized, dude. Look at this one. Nynthia. 6.84. Dog. Oh, ouch. Let's hope a little bit of uh, skeletonizing helped you out, Pangolin. Yeah, 5.2. So that's not too bad. Well, what is the best tech shark? I mean, uh, swordfish, now I'm calling all the names. Yeah, that's not even quite five, so that's even lighter. Man, it's hard to beat these. But they're more expensive. This is less expensive. Now, how about size? Size, okay? So let's get a pair of two out here. What do you think? Looks bigger, doesn't it? Aspect ratio. Now, about the same size. Get the weight thing out here. Let's put this down. Let's look at these different knives for size. Because that's pretty daggone important here. And Sharky, come here, bud. Let's put the parrot over here. Okay, so let's just go through them. Let's let's measure them up. Let just for real and for true. Okay. 
we're looking at about eight and a half inches. Uh, ooh, sharks, like three and three quarter inch blade. It's getting 95, 96 millimeter, 21 centimeter. So eight and a half, okay? Why'd I retract? I don't need to do that. Eight and a half. Grab a crazy man up here. Snynthia. <laughs> oh, God. I'm never going to live that one down. Ooh, that's a big dog. Over five, or over eight and five eighths. No real longer blade than the shark. Depends on where you're measuring from. Three and a half up here. The rest of the blade, well, depending. About four inches clear down here at the back end of the choil. Or three and three quarter. So really, this and the shark, about the same size. And the pangolin, probably comes right in there, doesn't it? If I can handle all this with one hand here and one hand there. Yeah, three and three quarter. And eight and a half overall, so they're within a smidge of each other. These three here, pretty close. Pretty close to the same size. Get over here, parrot. Parrot going to be smaller. I'll guarantee to you. Okay, that's three and a quarter. I thought it was a three inch. Seven and an eighth. So a little over seven inches. Three and a quarter inch. So 80, 82 millimeters, something like that. 18 and a half centimeters. So this is small. Small, light. Not a flipper. A flicker. So, cool. Different box. Smaller box. Okay. Just wanted to do this overview of these knives. Maybe I'll get into more detail later. But, shark, pangolin, crazy name, and the parrot. Yes, it is. Crazy name. You pronounce it. Thinia. Sninia. Maybe the S is silent. Maybe it's just Thinia. Thenia. Thenia. Then. Ia. Come from China. New brand. Bargain knives. White Mountain knives. 10% discount. LTK. Getting that? I hope so. Or I've wasted a hell of a lot of time trying to tell you guys something. You know, dual thumb studs. It's comfortable in the hand. I mean, this, actually, for next to nothing. I mean, this is Ganzo territory, right? Um, so, and Ganzo is also 440, so there you go. Uh, but this is different than the Ganzos. This is, you know, this is a liner lock, and it's, uh, it's a different style than most of their knives. This one is really big and heavy. It's a brute. It really is. And let's, let's go ahead and measure the blade stocks real quick or blade thickness you know this is about four millimeters not quite i think most of these things are going to be right in there but let's let's do it because otherwise you don't know uh, that's 3.5 and this d2 here 3.6 and let's see what we got here. Three. So three, three point six, and then mm, more like three point eight. That's this is a big brutal knife, but it's heavy. It's not skeletonized. It's a little less sophisticated fit and finish wise. It's not as expensive, obviously. Um, well, it's not 45 bucks. It's 39, 10%, you know, 36 bucks. That's a matter of, you know, and you get this in black or whatever. So it's a matter of uh, style and what you're looking to get, what you're looking to do. Good action on it. Good positive feel. Centered up. Heavy, heavy duty and heavy built. Um, Pangolin, more like the best tech in the way it feels. 
the D2, just everything about this, skeletonized. And these are 440 as well. No skeletonized, uh, no skeletonized liners. Um, lighter than the Thinia. And um, yeah, right hand or left hand tip up. See, you can do that on the Parrot as well. Doesn't look like you can do it on this one, on the uh, Pengolin or this one at all. This is tip down only. But these two will go right or left hand. So that's cool. That's nice. Interesting. QSP. I mean, just a different brand. I don't know. You know, is there too much out there in the market now? Are you totally, thoroughly confused? Because if you're not that confused yet, wait until I get down the road on you. Because, you know, SRM, Sam Remo. I mean, there's just so many others. And, you know, you got your real steel and you got your Ontario rat and you got a lot of budget knives and Ganzos and all that kind of thing out there. A lot of players in the marketplace just thought maybe if some of these are designs that interest you and at least you get a little bit of a feel before I get into detail on these knives, just kind of what they're all about. All right. Hey, thanks for hanging out. I know it's been a long time, but we just we're messing with knives, putting them back together and fiddling around that kind of thing. So, hey, hope you had an enjoyable or maybe at least educational or informative time today because you know what we do around here we love them knives so stay sharp please